Hi, and welcome to BFG Photography. Adobe has just released some new features in both Photoshop and Lightroom, and one of the best and most exciting new features is this new AI noise reduction. So in this video, I'll walk you through exactly how to use the new AI noise reduction feature in Photoshop and Lightroom. And then I'll take several different photos and run them through the noise reduction in Adobe, and also run them through Topaz Denoise AI and DxO Pure Raw 3 and then I'll compare the results. Hey, you know what? I'm kind of anxious to see the results myself, so let's get started. Before we look at some photos, I wanted to mention a few caveats. First of all, the noise reduction only works on Bayer and Xtrans RAW files, not on JPEG or TIFF or other formats. Adobe does have plans to expand it to work on other files in the future. The noise reduction process creates a new DNG file with dash enhance dash NR appended to the file name. And watch out because those DNG files can be kind of large. I've been seeing 150 to 200 megabyte files when using the Canon R5 RAW files as input. And lastly, I'll mention that Adobe recommends using AI noise reduction at the start of your workflow, in particular before applying any AI masks or content-aware fill, as the noise reduction could change those results. AI noise reduction is a processor-intensive task. In particular, your graphics processor will make a big difference in the speed. I used a Windows PC with an NVIDIA 4080 graphics card for this video. I also tested it on a PC with a NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti graphics card. You can see the specifications of the two systems here. The latter system took 8 to 10 times as long to process the noise reduction. Just be aware that processing times for this noise reduction will vary significantly depending upon your system configuration. Okay, let's take a look at some files now. Let's start with this photo of a downy woodpecker taken with a Canon R5 at ISO 8000. I have this open in Lightroom, but ACR and Photoshop will look very similar. And we'll take a look at Photoshop in a moment. To see the new AI noise reduction option, you need to open the detail panel menu here, and then you'll notice a denoise button that has been added. Now, any noise reduction that you may have made in a prior version will be stored here under manual noise reduction. You may need to click this button to open up the panel and see the sliders. So these are the, what I'll call, legacy adjustments. The luminance on this particular file has been set at 62. If I click denoise, I'll create a new DNG file, and that DNG file will have all of the adjustments that have been stored in the raw file except for the manual noise reduction. This luminance slider will be set automatically to zero in the new DNG file created by denoise, so it doesn't matter where this slider is when you click the denoise button. For now, I'm going to push the slider all the way to the left, look at zero on the denoise and zoom to 100% and look at the amount of noise in this file. It's quite a bit of noise. I'll move the slider back to oh, around 60 or so. Now I'll click denoise and we'll try out the new enhanced noise reduction in Lightroom. First thing that we get is this new panel that pops up. It's the same panel that you use for raw details and super resolution. We have an estimated time for completion and a button that shows create stack in case you want to stack the photos to uh, organize things. Now this is zoomed into about 250%, I believe, and it's kind of hard to move around when you're zoomed in that much. Uh, there is a button in the bottom right hand corner, it looks like a magnifying glass. If you click on that, you'll see the entire photo and you can simply click to any spot you'd like to jump to immediately. Now there's only one slider for denoise. It goes from one to a hundred. And as with any noise reduction tool, it's better to use just enough noise reduction to get rid of most of the noise. If you use too much, you're gonna start losing detail. So on this particular file, I think I'll go somewhere around 60 or 65. If I look up here, I've gotten rid of most of the noise and I'm still retaining detail. So I'll click the Enhance button and wait for eight seconds. You'll see over here either a spinning wheel 
or what looks like a clock face counting down the time. And it's done. There's the enhanced file with enhanced NR appended to the file name. And it's done a great job of reducing the noise and still retaining detail. Now we can compare that to the original RAW file. Here's the original RAW. I'm going to click on both of them simultaneously by holding down the shift button and clicking on both. Then I'll press C on the keyboard to compare them. And you can see the original on the left and the new enhanced noise reduction on the right. Look at the feathers on top of the bird's head here. We've got kind of a blurry mess while in the new enhanced noise reduction it's quite a bit more clear. There are many different places in the photo where we've got more detail in the enhanced noise reduction version. Quite impressive. Now let's see how Topaz Denoise AI stacks up. Okay, I'm going to add the same RAW file to Topaz Denoise AI and I'm using the RAW methodology, which I believe gives the best result. And here is before, and here is after, and I'm using the recommended preferences. I'm going to save this image. Okay, here we are in DxO Pure RAW 3.1.0. I've added the same RAW file. I'm going to process, and I'll use Deep Prime XD, which gives the most detailed result. I'll start processing, and this will take about um, 10 to 15 seconds. And that's done. And we can view the results here. There's one to one, before, and after. Okay, now I've loaded the original Adobe Manual Noise Reduction RAW file here as well as all three DNG files from the three different noise reduction methodologies. And I've got them all zoomed in to 100%. You can do a comparison. Uh, obviously, the worst of the bunch is the original RAW file. The Topaz, the DxO Pure RAW, and the Adobe Enhanced are all excellent results. I think it's a matter of personal preference. I will point out one difference that I've noticed, and that's the eyeball is a bit gray on the Topaz, whereas the DxO Pure Raw and the Adobe Enhanced have retained more of the brown color of the eyeball. Now I'll grab several more files and we'll do some more comparisons. We're going to switch to Photoshop for this next photo. Uh, this is a hummingbird shot at ISO 20,000. As you can see, the options here under the Detail panel are very similar to what we just saw in Lightroom. Again, there's a Manual Noise Reduction section that I can open up. I can see the luminance was set at 67 for this particular photo. If I zoom in and set the luminance down to zero, I can see there's quite a bit of noise at ISO 20,000. So let's leave that at Oh, about 70 or so. I'll click the Denoise button to activate Adobe AI Noise Reduction. Again, on the bottom right-hand corner, clicking the magnifying glass, I can jump to any portion of the photo. A setting of about 60 looks pretty good. I'll use that. Click the Enhance button. On the right side next to Denoise, you'll see a circle icon that completes a circle, and it's done. I now have two photos open. I have the original RAW file with the original legacy manual noise reduction, and I have the new DNG file with the new Denoise AI. Quite a bit of difference. On the right-hand side is the enhanced noise reduction, the new noise reduction, and look at the amount of detail I have in the feathers now compared to the legacy methodology. And if I move down here, I can see a big increase in the amount of detail. That looks really good so far. I'm really impressed. Let's pull up the results using Topaz Denoise AI and DxO Pure Raw and compare. Okay, here we have all four photos lined up with four different noise reduction methodologies. 
And as was true in the last case, the legacy Adobe methodology, the manual adjustments, are by far the worst of the bunch. All three of these other methodologies are a big improvement with a lot more detail in the feathers. I will say on the topaz here on the top right, again, the colors look a little drab. I might be able to fix that or adjust it by tweaking some of the sliders. But there is a little bit more detail in the bill of the bird in that particular methodology as well. Again, all three have a much better result with more detail and less noise. It seems like the higher the ISO, the more true that is. Let's go on to another file with even higher ISO. Okay, now we're really pushing the limits. This photo was taken at ISO 25,600. And if I zoom in, you can see there's more noise than photo here. Let's see if Denoise can handle this one. Clicking the Denoise button. Again, the bottom right hand corner. Jump to the eye of the bird. I'm going to have to increase Denoise a bit. And we'll go with 77 on this one. Again, we have that uh, circular icon completing the circle and the denoise is done. Wow, that's a big improvement. For the raw version, I'm going to push the luminance adjustment up to about 80. It's going to turn into a blurry mess, I think. And here you have the two files, the original Adobe Raw on the left and the enhanced on the right. Wow, what a difference. <laughs> Big improvement with the new Adobe AI. If I zoom out to 50%, you can see still a huge difference, even at 50%. The noise over here on the original is much higher than what I've got on the enhanced version. Uh, the overall uh, result is just much better with much more detail on the enhanced. Now I'll add Topaz Denoise AI and DxO Pure Raw into the mix. And here we have all four photos loaded up into Photoshop at 100%. Again, we can see the legacy methodology here from Adobe with the most noise by far, the other three methodologies having a lot more detail and less noise. And once again, the Topaz version seems to have a little bit washed out color relative to the other two. At 50%, I can still see significant improvements over the legacy Adobe methodology. At 25%, I can see significant banding in the original RAW file, still present in the Topaz, nearly gone in the enhanced noise reduction from Adobe, and nearly gone in the DxO Pure RAW. Let's try one more file at 25,600 ISO. I searched through my archives to find a photo that was not taken on a Canon R5 and came up with this photo from 2019 shot on a EOS 5D Mark IV. It was also shot at 25,600 ISO. One thing about this file, it has a lot of uh, adjustments. So I'm going to actually reset all of the basic adjustments except I will add a little bit to the exposure because it does look to be underexposed. I'll do the same thing with the other noise reduction methodologies. Let's open the Detail tab. We have Luminance set to zero, and there's a lot of noise in this photo. Let's click Denoise and see if Photoshop AI Noise Reduction can handle this file. I'll click the magnifying glass in the bottom right corner, look at the eye of the macaque, and it looks like somewhere in the mid-70s ought to work just fine, so let's try that. Click Enhance, we get the countdown circle over here, and the file should pop up in the bottom left, as it just did. Now I'll open the same file again, except that I'll use the legacy noise reduction putting that somewhere around 70. Trying to get as much detail as I can without causing too many artifacts. And here we have the legacy 
noise reduction on the left and the new noise reduction AI on the right. And there's a big improvement. Look at the detail in the eyes compared to the old. And all of this fur around the animal's face looks much better in the new noise reduction AI. Now let's add Topaz and DxO to the mix. Here I have all four photos opened in Photoshop and zoomed at 100%. You can see the legacy methodology from Adobe has the least amount of detail, more smeared than anything. This is the Topaz version on the top right, and it uh, has much more detail, but it looks also less saturated. The Adobe Enhanced version with the Enhanced AI noise reduction looks very good on the bottom right hand corner here. Much improved over the original. I'm very impressed with that. And on the bottom left, the DxO Pure Raw version is probably the best of the bunch by a small margin. It has a little bit more detail and looks excellent. So all three of the newer methodologies have done a much better job of reducing noise while keeping detail. Let's see what this looks like at 50%. At 50%, the differences are a little harder to see, but there still is more detail on the three newer methodologies. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that comparison. I have to say I'm very impressed with the new noise reduction methodology from Adobe. I think it stacks up very well against some third-party competition. Of the three methodologies that I checked out, I have to say I'll give a slight edge to DxO Pure Raw 3. Although for now I think I'll stick with Adobe Noise Reduction AI, because I don't think the difference would be significant enough to be noticeable unless you did a side-by-side -side comparison. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is there a noise reduction methodology that you prefer? Is there one that you use that I haven't included in this comparison? If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the notify button to see more videos like this in the future. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.